And if I'm not mistaken, uh, hold on. Okay. And if I'm not, <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> I always do this. Again, thank you so much, Pat, for your input. You thank me so okay. much. No, I know, and I was like, thank you. I'm so thank thankful. <laughs> I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm so happy. Make sure that you position yourself as a team player, leader, and an initiator. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like birds. Yeah. I just like don't like them in general. No, especially the crows here. Especially those like geese, you know, like by the seawall and all these seagulls. They poop everywhere. They poop everywhere. Like <laughs> insane. Like mean, how much do you poop on a daily basis? I think they're just testing us. <laughs> they're testing us. <laughs> they're testing us. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Rachel, and welcome back to my channel. If you're like me that came to Canada for studies in hopes of immigrating later on, then you probably understand that working in Canada is helpful in alleviating some of the financial burden while living here. Aside from money, working may help you gain Canadian experience and can even help you land a skilled job after graduation. From my experience, and I guess for some of you as well, you're probably wondering how and where to start. And although I have shared my experiences on how I found my part-time job here, there are some questions that are better answered by the pros. With that, in today's video, I want to introduce Pat from Empower, and we will be discussing how to get a job in Canada as an international student. So yes, pretty exciting stuff, and well, let's get right into it. Before we start, I want to introduce Pat. Joining us today is Pat, CEO and co-founder of Empower. Thank you so much, Pat, for joining us today. I guess to start, can you kindly tell us a bit about yourself? your background, and I guess for my viewers out there, what you enjoy doing here in Vancouver. Yeah, thank you for having me. I came to Canada as an international student. So I was born and raised in Thailand and came to Canada in 2013 for my university. I went to Simon Fraser University for an entrepreneurship degree and a marketing degree. And I guess for my viewers out there, what do you enjoy doing here in Vancouver? I really enjoy going for walks with my dog, Luca, and really enjoying the nature and stopping by ice cream stores. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing that. Next up, let's talk about your brainchild, which is Empower. Can you kindly tell us a bit about what it is, why you started it, and I guess what is its role in assisting international students in Canada? So Empower was something that I started because of my own pain point of being new to the country. I didn't know what a resume was and I felt like international students like myself always had to learn job search the hard way. So Empower was all started initially as a meetup group, as a community group so that we can help international students get the job that they deserve. So what we do, we use our people first approach to really go on a mission to help international students find jobs in Canada and also build their connections in the country. So we have our job search programs online communities of 500 students right now and also continuing to grow our community across the country. Thank you so much, Pat, for sharing that with my viewers. Guys, when I first connected with Pat, I was so excited. We share the same belief that international students deserve a voice as they are an underserved and underrepresented group here in Canada. We both know that international students bring a wealth of foreign skill and experience that Canadian employers will appreciate. So moving on, let's now talk about cover letters. I guess let's just give them the 411. Um, what is it? Why is it important or rather, why is it needed? Cover letter, if you think about cover letter, it is a motivation letter. It is a one page letter that you put, say on top of your resume, submit it together with your resume in order to tell the employer that you are a good fit for that role. Cover letter is not a duplication of your resume. It entails your interest into the position, your interest into the company, and really highlighting relevant experience that will make you a perfect candidate for the company. Why is cover letter needed? It is a letter that invites employers to actually read your resume. And I guess my next question would be, what do you think are the vital components of a cover letter? There are three main parts that go into a cover letter. The first one is an opening paragraph. An opening paragraph is the hook that introduces your interest and motivation into the company. It invites your employers to actually read through all your cover letter. 
The second part is body paragraphs. And this could be two to three paragraphs highlighting your own experience as relevant to the position that you are applying to. The last part is the closing paragraph. And this is a call to action. You want to say what you want from the employer. If you want an interview, write it right there. Or you actually can summarize your skills as relevant to the position. Awesome, thanks for laying that out. Um, that makes me want to go back to my cover letter and um, make some serious changes because uh, I definitely did not follow that format. Now, let's dive deeper. This may be a loaded question and I'll give you some time to ponder on it, but basically I want to know what you think are the top three common mistakes that students make on their cover letter. One of the common mistakes that I see international students make is that we all are being way too humble. You have the international experience from your home country, so make sure that you highlight that in your cover letter. The second piece is that we have English as a second language. So I often see students make grammatical errors or spelling errors on the letter. And the last part is that you either be too formal on your cover letter or be too informal on your cover letter. The tip is make sure that you know the tone that you want to use in this letter. But I just want to know, hmm. like, um, in terms of like uh, choosing the tone, does that does the tone pertain to like the job position or like if it's like an entry level, should it be like a bit more semi formal or more like if you apply for like a finance or accounting role, like you have to be so formal. But if you apply for like a startup. Um, or like a smaller companies and take a look at how like they might not be too formal right they mm -hmm. like want to make sure that you position yourself as a consultant or like a consultant of that startup so be like hey I have this experience and I know so much about your company and this is you know like a little bit less informal oh, okay yeah I can totally relate to the first point, which is selling myself short. And I know that there are some skill sets that I need to highlight that are in fact appreciated by these Canadian employers. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's now move on to resumes. So Pat, first off, what is a resume? A resume is a summary of your professional experience. It doesn't include everything that you have done in your life. There is a difference between a resume and a CV. In Thailand, a lot of people use CV instead of resume. CV actually stands for curricula vitae, meaning it, it, is, it is a Latin word that actually means course of life. So in a CV, you put everything on that paper. However, resume is a summary of your professional experience. You only highlight the relevant experience as related to the job that you're applying to. So guys, in summary, resumes are competency-based, whereas CVs are credential-based. Now, when an employer reads a student's resume, what exactly are they looking for? There are two main things that employers look for in a resume. First is whether or not you are qualified for the job, meaning that you have all the skills required or you have the credential or education required for the position. The second piece is that whether or not you can fit in with the team really well. So that has to do with your soft skill, you, the way you position yourself as a candidate. Are there different formats for resumes? Yes, there are three main types of resume formats. The first one is actually the employer's favorite, which is a chronological resume. This one, it highlights your most recent experience at the very top. The second type of a resume format is the functional resume. This actually highlights your skills as related to the job that you're applying to, and it highlights skills in different sections, but not directly in a chronological order. And the third format is a hybrid resume. It is a mix of a chronological resume combined with a functional resume. So you group your experience into different skill sets, but also able to order your experience in a chronological order. Okay, so just out of curiosity, what is the preferred format for resumes in Canada? The preferred format is actually a chronological format of a resume. This actually highlights all your experience in a linear form. So employers get to see all your experience and your career progression on one page. However, if you have international experience, 
from back home that's relevant to a professional job that you are looking to get into but currently working part-time in Canada in a completely different field I recommend that you use a functional resume or a hybrid resume so guys be sure to check out Empower's website to download a resume template found on their resources page Empower also has a slack group where you can find a ton of information and you can even share and review your resume and cover letters with other international students I'm so happy to be part of this community and I want you to know that this resource exists so be sure to check that out next stop and I guess another fully loaded question here but can you name the three or your top three tips in writing a resume my number one tip is that you should always personalize every resume that you submit make sure that you take the keywords present on the job description and put that onto your resume so that you are speaking the language second one is to make sure that you personalize the top 30 percent of your resume by writing a summary profile about your experience as related to the job and the last part, us being international students or having English as a second language, please make sure that you have a strong and valid sentences when you speak about your accomplishment. And instead of writing about your responsibility that you had in your previous jobs, write about accomplishment instead. My next question is a bit on the personal side. So basically, before coming to Canada, I was a recent graduate. When I got my degree, I skedaddled immediately to Canada for studies yet again. I didn't have Canadian nor foreign work experience when I arrived. So I guess my question is to alleviate some of my viewers' concerns. Do you think that this makes it harder for us to find a job? To better rephrase my question, um, do you think that it will be difficult for students to find work if they don't have experience at all? The truth is everybody has to start somewhere. So you can actually include your project experience or your extracurricular experience like volunteering and include it onto your resume. And I guess my last question for this topic is how can students or actually anyone for that matter present themselves in better light when creating their resume and cover letter? That's an excellent question. So what you want to do is actually position yourself as a specialist instead of a generalist. A specialist knows exactly what he or she brings to the table and knows what he or she is talking about. And a generalist is that you are a master of all. You can do everything and not so specific to the job. So when you're applying for a position, make sure that you have your top three skills and highlight those onto your resume and cover letter. How you present yourself on your application also depends on the type of company you're applying to. If you're applying for a startup or smaller companies, you want to position yourself as a consultant, providing value to the company immediately. However, if you're applying for a larger corporation, make sure that you position yourself as a team player, an initiator, or a leader. Now that we're done with cover letters and resumes, I guess the next big challenge is to actually apply for or look for jobs. So Pat, I want to know what your experience was like. How did you find your job and was it easy? Job searching for me was not easy at all. I applied to part-time jobs, no one wanted to hire me. I applied to an internship and no one wanted to hire me. And I received a lot of no's along the way and of course a lot of tears along the way as well. However, when I first got my first internship, it's actually helped me gain that Canadian experience and it's easier the next time. When I first applied to my full-time job out of university, I actually looked for that position six months before I graduated. How I actually got that job is actually through networking. I showed up at every hiring fair that the company that I wanted to work for is there and make sure that I speak to the hiring managers, the managers in different departments, or even some friends that I know that work in that company. I also use exactly the same approach of targeting the company and networking into the company without having to really apply online by also researching about the company before starting the application to get my current job as product manager. 
Yeah, I totally agree with you on the networking approach. Guys, aside from your experience or skill sets, networking is also important in finding jobs here in Canada. So what are some of the resources that students can look into when applying for jobs? If your universities or colleges actually have career centers, so please make sure that you visit your career centers and get all the help that you can. The second piece is if you're not on LinkedIn already, you must. LinkedIn is the best platform to actually help you network and build your personal brand online. Lastly, please make sure that you join professional communities like Empower Community, Product Management Community, Marketing Community. There are a lot out there online, so please make sure that you use that as an opportunity to network and gain new skills. And I guess after finding that job and locking into it, how should students apply for that job? Before you even apply for a job, you have to make sure you know what skills and strengths you have to offer first. And the second thing is, you have to make sure you know what type of company you want to work for. Don't just aim in the dark and apply to any jobs out there because the likelihood of you landing the interview would be very low. What you want to do instead, if you have time, make sure that you go and network before you apply for a job. Use networking as an opportunity to research about the position to see if that's something you even want to do. I know that a lot of you have to rush to find a job after graduation and that is fine too. So in that case, go and apply for jobs online and instead of not doing anything afterwards, reach out to the hiring managers or the recruiter or people who work in that company to see if they can speed up the process for you or they can vouch for you after. Thank you so much for front-loading this information to my viewers. And guys, this is just the tip of the iceberg. For more information, Empower actually has an online program called the Empower Express Bootcamp. Can you elaborate further on your online program? The Empower Express Bootcamp is a seven-day job search program designed specifically for international students. The program addresses specific unique needs that we all have as an international student, like getting a job with your PR in mind, or even translating your international experience from abroad, or even just writing good enough application with having English as a second language. Everybody going through the program will also have the opportunity to learn directly from recruiters, hiring managers, or career coaches that actually make hiring decisions. The bootcamp also provides action plans daily, so you can have templates, worksheets, everything that you need to get you started on a job search journey in Canada, and you can go and start applying for jobs right away. By the way guys, the online program is currently at 30% off, but I also have a special promo code and you can get an additional 5% off if you use my code RRDENSEL. Anyway, Pat, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me and for sharing all of this information with my viewers. I will be linking all the relevant information about Empower in the description box below, so be sure to check that out. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to be a part of your job search journey in Canada. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.